How have we survived living in low-income housing for the last four years? Well, I survived for the last four years. You know why? Because you only three years old. I forgot. So you only been surviving for the last three years. Low-income housing has been, honestly, a complete I blessing. You. I love you too, baby. Low-income housing has been very, very, very helpful with me over the last four years of my life. <sighs> Simply because I have a really hard time keeping a job. My work ethic at a job is very, very low. I've been that way here since I was 18 years old, but I've literally worked over a hundred jobs in my entire life. A year and a half ago, I moved here, right? This is my new low income apartment. And this one is really, really nice, right? I love it here. And this is very, very helpful for me because if I'm not working, my rent is zero dollars, right? And my utilities are paid for me. They send me a reimbursement check every single month to pay my DTE bill and my consumer's bill. That's my light and my heat bill, right? And not only that, but I'm also eligible for food stamps. I get 516 of those a month if I'm not working. And I'm also eligible for cash assistance that I get $403 a month if I'm not working. The help is there if I need it. And that's what I tell people, right? Some people might think that people who live in low income and depend on the government are lazy and things like that. And some people are, some people get comfortable and depend on it for long term. but I, I look at it as help when it's needed, right? Cause when I need it, it's there, especially with my bad reputation of keeping a stable job, especially with me being a father. Now, speaking of that, being a dad, right? My son was born three years ago. And when he was born, me and his mom had moved into our first apartment, which was also low income. And that low income apartment, the one before here, that one was really, really bad, right? It, it was just bad living conditions. It was in a bad area. It just wasn't really a good place to live, right? But it was still helpful because at that low income apartment, my rent was only 25 a month if I wasn't working, but I didn't have no utilities there. Even if I was working or not at the other one, I had no utilities, so that was kind of cool there. But here, I like it even better because my rent is zero if I'm not working and my utilities are paid for me. And it's a better apartment. So somebody told me that every apartment complex has to have at least 30% of their apartments low income. I don't know if that's true or not, but if that's true, that's crazy. That means that there's even more low income housings everywhere. You just have to go look for them and start applying. If you don't have a place to stay, right? Say if you live in with a family member or a friend or something like that, technically you're homeless. If you actually put homeless on your application, then they'll, they'll kind of make you a priority to get you in one. Uh, I believe that's how it works. And the reason I'm so open about my situation and about me living in low income housing is because it's life. Everybody's situation is different, right? There is no shame in my game at all because it's help that's needed, right? And that's how a lot of people should look at low income housing as help as a stepping stone. Technically, this is low income slash regular apartment anyways, because if I'm working a solid 40 hours a week, my rent go up to market rate anyways. Which brings me to my next point. Low income housing is a really big help for a lot of people, but it can also make you feel very, very stuck in your situation. And that's one of the main issues that I have with low income housing is that when you start working a job, they will base your rent off of 30% of your gross income, which a lot of the time, depending on if you're working full time, it can make your rent really really high right and i've experienced this last year like they i started working a job as a custodian making 17 dollars an hour right and they put my rent up to 890 dollars, right which was effective that very next month they gave me 30 days before they adjusted my rent but when it came to that time like i wasn't able to afford it so i had to quit that job for them to put my rent back down because at the, I, I don't know what happened but i just wasn't able to afford $890 when it came time to pay that rent. And I honestly felt like that was crazy, right? And that, that I was very, very upset about that because I feel like low income housing is designed to, to make people just live low income. I've literally had to quit multiple jobs because of that reason, right? Because I just wasn't able to afford my rent. 
And it's like, we are in low income for a reason. Like, why are y'all making rent so high? So I honestly feel like it's, it's designed that way. And not, and that's why I feel like a lot of people uh, kind of feel stuck when they're in low income housing, right? And including myself, I feel like I should at least be a little bit further than I am in terms of my financial situation. Uh, but it's just like, I don't know, but I, either way, you know, I'm, I'm still figuring it out and everything, but I'm still grateful that I'm able to live at a very, very, very affordable price majority of the time, especially when I'm not working, right? Which also brings me to my next point is that low-income housings are very, very strict. Like, let me tell y'all how crazy this get. Somebody actually just got evicted from here. I think like a few weeks ago, I overheard the... A lady in the office on the phone when I was in there signing some paper. I overheard her on the phone saying that a lady got evicted for smoking weed and cigarettes in her apartment and her neighbor was complaining. But it wasn't like a one-time thing. It was like, it was an ongoing thing. And they gave her a seven-day notice to vacate her apartment, her and her kids, literally for smoking in the apartment. I, the rules are in place because it's like, obviously it's, it's a government assistant type of living thing. So, of course, rules are going to be strict and things like that. But it's like, it's like, it get crazy strict here. But it also makes a lot of things safe around here. So, I, I really don't complain about the strict rules. But for a lot of people, um, it, it is like they kind of, you know, tell you how to live. Like, it get crazy when it comes to the rules. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be in low-income housing. I told myself I want to be out of low-income housing by the end of this year. But trying to be realistic... It might be a little longer than that um just because i, I really want to get my financial situation right and i want to be able to afford you know wherever i decide to move to after here and not have to worry about money and i can live comfortable right and low income housing is a bit is allowing me to live very very comfortable and worry free right and i think low income housing can be a good option for a lot of people right and you just got to find the good ones though because there are bad ones. So we had inspections a couple days ago, right? They do yearly inspections, which you can also get evicted for if you were violating any of the inspections. Like, can't your apartment can't be dirty. You can't have, like, dirty walls or dirty carpets or, you know, stuff all on your balcony. And, like, it, it's crazy, bro. Like, all of that is, like, literally a lease violation. They do state inspections every year, right? And then they do, like, just the regular apartment inspections like every three months like i've seen people get evicted from here a lot like i mean i honestly don't know what the reason but i just thought the the smoking thing like that was crazy because that lady had kids like damn they like told her to leave for, for smoking but i mean yes you gotta follow the rules i just try to take advantage of the situations that i that i'm in like get all the help that i'm receiving you know take advantage of that and and be able to to get myself in the right position where i need to be to live a stable comfortable life and not have to worry about money not have to worry about struggling and paying the bills that's what low income housing is for help people get to where they need to be in life without struggling you shouldn't be living check to check right you should have money to spend. You should have money to live comfortably, to have the things that you want. A lot of people that I know can't live comfortably, right? It's always bills, 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 bills. Now, and, and I get it. It's life, right? But if you was in a situation to where you can actually stack up your money, and you know, for the most part, like things would be better for you. So I don't know. But alright, y'all. Uh, thank y'all for listening. Um, and I'll be doing more videos about low-income housing and all of that and stuff just to give y'all more information because it's a lot of y'all that actually like that. And I want to hear your experience. On my other two low-income housing videos, like, I I'll be reading the comments and I'll be, you know, hearing y'all situation and what y'all been through. I love reading y'all comments about that and seeing what other people experience is like. So let me know your experience living low-income housing. And I will see y'all in the next vlog. Watch this one before you go because I know you ain't watched this one yet. So watch this video. I love you. Thank you for being here.